Swaggy people, welcome to another learning moment with me, Noelin Chirabo. I'm here to inspire you, motivate you, and energize you so you can lift your fullest potential. Today we have yet another interesting learning um, topic, and we're talking about empowering people around us. Now, the thing is that we all want to hang around people that add value. We all want to have that one person in our circles where if you have a problem, they are your go-to person. If you have a question, they seem to always have an answer. They seem to always have a solution for everything. And we find those people, they're like magnetic for many of us. We always drawn to them. We are always drawn to them because of the value they add. So as a person, as a leader, how do you become that person that is providing empowerment to your friends, to your team, to the people that are around you, that you begin to add value to their lives? So today I want to share with us seven things you can do to empower people around you. This can apply to you as an individual in your uh, circle of friends, or it can apply to you as a leader in your business, in your company, or in your organization. So here are the seven things that you can do to empower people. And they are all set, and they are all S. So we call them the seven S. So the first principle, the first thing you can do to empower other people is accountability. If there's anything that holds people in check, it's accountability. If you want to empower the people around you, hold them in check, hold them accountable. Something shifts in our lives when we know that we are comfortable, when we know that we are answerable, we kind of keep ourselves within the right lane. Why? Because we know we're going to have to give an account for everything we're doing. We're going to have to give an account for our lives. We're going to have to give an account for our choices, for the decisions we're making. So one way to empower people to own up, to empower people to step up is by holding them accountable. If you are a team leader, work with them to set the, the goals and then also sit with them to evaluate those goals. So at the end of the day, they know that whatever they're doing is something they already agreed on. So if they don't deliver on their promise, they are not being authentic, they're not being dependable. So accountability is one way to empower people. As much as many people would shun away from accountability because you're thinking I'm an adult, I don't want to answer questions, I don't want to be asked, you know, all these kinds of questions, but accountability keeps you in check. So even at a personal level, consider getting accountability partners, people that can ask you the tough questions, people that are going to ask you the things that make you feel uncomfortable, because in, do in so doing, you're going to become very cautious about the choices you're making, you're going to become very cautious about the decisions you are making. So accountability is key in empowering people. The second I think you can do to empower people is affirmation. There is power in affirmation. All of us love to be affirmed. We want to be in places where we feel appreciated and accepted. And one way you can create that environment for people around you is affirmation. Now, affirmation is not flattery. Affirmation is authentic. It's me recognizing what the good in you. It's me recognizing what you excel at. It's me being able to recognize what is what is that thing that uh, you, you add to the rest of us and affirming it. So affirmation is so powerful in uh, building people's esteem, in building people's uh, confidence, but also in building morale and motivation among a team. So as a team leader, as, an, uh, as a leader in whatever space you are, begin to affirm people, begin to call them out. Sometimes people have strength that they don't even know about. It's interesting that when it comes to interviews, I've always found it very interesting that when you ask people about their weaknesses, they have a full list of weaknesses. And then when you flip it and ask about their strength, they begin to scratch their heads and to look up the ceiling. And I'm thinking, how can you know so much about your weaknesses and know almost nothing about your strength? This is because many of us have been raised to believe that if you, if you affirm yourself, you are being arrogant, you're being proud, or you're showing off, but there's nothing wrong with you knowing what you excel at. It is important for you as an adult to know your strength. What are the things you excel at? And as people call these things out, begin to appreciate them. Now, it's so discouraging when someone affirms you and all you can say is, oh, really? Seriously? No. When somebody says you are good at something, say thank you. Receive the affirmation. Affirmation is a key way in growing people, especially in calling them out of their comfort zones, in calling them to step into the things they're good at, but probably don't yet have the confidence or the esteem to embrace. The third thing you can do as a leader in empowering people around you is assessment, in the sense of offering objective perspective. Now, assessment is being able to offer the other opinion that sometimes people don't have. You do not want to be the kind of person who is yes all the time. We all know that friend who simply agrees with us for the sake of agreeing with us. And over time, we realize they are actually not objective. So for you to empower people around you, for you to add value to people around you, is hold, hold, uh, offer objective perspectives. 
offer the assessment, the ability for them to assess their decision, more than just agreeing with everything because you like them, because you want to be liked and approved by them. Play the devil's advocate. I love to flip situations for the sake of helping people see the other perspective. And oftentimes, because they had not seen it from the other angle, it gives them new insight that helps them much better informed decision. So another way you can empower people is by offering objective objective feedback or by offering a platform for them to assess themselves and the decisions that they are making. The fourth thing you can do in empowering people is offering advice. And when I talk about advice, I'm talking about wise counsel. The thing about advice is that it's so easy to give. It's like all of us have an opinion about anything. And so when somebody asks you something, oftentimes you already know what you want to tell them. But before you jump into telling them what you think, Wise counsel is being able to see it from the other person's perspective. Being able to offer counsel that is in the best interest of the other person. So remember, anytime somebody asks you for counsel, when they ask you for wisdom, they're not asking just for your opinion. They are asking for wise counsel that puts them at the center of that decision that is basically based on their best interest. So wise counsel is very key in empowering people around you because that makes you the go-to person. When people are confused, when people don't know what to do, you become that person they go to. And you see, the thing about being able to offer advice or wise counsel, you don't always have to have, have the answers. Sometimes all you have to do is provide a space for people to reason out and be a, and be a bouncing wall for whatever they're talking about. And before you know it, they actually realize their own answers. Because the reality is, many times when people come to us for advice, they already know what they want. They already have an idea of what they want. And they're just looking for somebody to agree with them. They're just looking for somebody to affirm exactly what they want to do. So a good way to offer wise counsel is to help people find their own answers by simply re listening and re reflecting back what they are sharing so that they know exactly what's going on in their minds and how it sounds when they say it. The other thing, fifth thing you can do in uh, empowering people is admonishment and that is something to do with caution, rebuke and correction. I know we all want to be around people that just are farmers, but for you to uh, fully empower people, you've got to have the balance between being able to affirm people and being able to admonish them. We know all of us growing up, our parents loved us, but then, especially in the African context, they also spanked us. And looking back, we realized it was out of love. Now, you don't have to spank people <laughs> for you to uh, admonish them, but the thing is, if you are going to empower people, sometimes you're going to have to call them up. It's what I call tough love. It's being able to challenge people out of whatever you know is not good for them, whatever they're doing, and it's probably having a very negative impact on everyone around them. So being able to admonish people, admonishing people in a respectful way, in a loving way, in a patient way, that at the end of the day, it may not be comfortable when you, when you do it the first time, but eventually the person will realize that you have their best interests at heart, that you meant well for them. So we all know that person who challenged us probably, admonished us at some point, and for that moment you didn't even want to talk to them, you didn't want to see them. But a couple of months or years later you look back and realize, I am because that person challenged me to change my ways, to change my decision, or to step up and do something differently. The second last thing you can do in empowering people around you is providing assets. Now, assets is not just money or materials or stuff like that, because you might be thinking, I don't have that much to give away. Assets is basically being resourceful. So when, when people come around you, one way you can empower them is providing tools, providing links, providing networks, providing, making introductions for them. All those are assets, things that basically empower people to move to the next level. One of the things that is frustrating is hanging around people that have so much knowledge and no solution. It's like they will talk and talk and talk and at the end of the day, you're still wondering, so what do I do exactly? You don't want to be that kind of person. You want to be a resourceful person. You, have, you want to have a toolbox. That when someone comes and says, I need this, you probably know someone, you probably have a link, you know, probably know a page or a place or a contact that you can refer to if you can't help them. And all these make a lot of sense for the people that come to you. That is a quick way to add value. We live in a world where there's so much information. Everything is open source. Okay, not everything. A lot of things are open source. And so you just have to stay informed to know exactly what is relevant, especially for the people in your circles. Sometimes, even when you don't know, when somebody asks me something and something I can look up, I'll say, you know what, I don't know, but I'm going to look it up and then I'll get back to you. That is being resourceful. And whenever you provide a tool, information, a link, 
that's an asset and that is how you empower people you don't just tell them what to do but you also give them the tools to do it it's the analogy of you do not just uh, teach people how to fish but you also give them the hook so they can continue fishing for themselves and the last thing you can do in empowering people around you is providing application now many of us are very knowledgeable in so many things you're basically oozing with a lot of knowledge and information that it can be an overload for the people around you if you are that kind of person, you can help people uh, feel empowered by relating concepts, principles to life application. For many people, they are only going to implement things if it makes sense in their lives. So probably you had this concept, probably you read this book, you went to this seminar, and there's all this knowledge you are able to gather. Begin to relate that knowledge to their life situations. And when you share it, the people will be like, oh, okay, so this is what I'm supposed to do about it. Application is a powerful way for driving people into action. So you want to drive people around you into change, into improving, into getting better. Provide the tools for application. Yes, share the principle, but also show how does it relate to their everyday life and what can they do? What are the action steps they can begin taking right now to better their lives as they work on that principle? So those are seven things you can do to empower people around you. It could be a team, it could be your friends, or just people that follow you. My name is Noelin Chirabo. Have a blessed day and a blessed week. Let's keep the conversations going online. God richly bless you.